we check one? We have power. Good morning, good morning. If you want to make your way in. It's good, good morning. Good morning. Morning. Someone's chipper this morning. Yes, well, welcome, welcome. My name is Colby. I am the youth pastor, the facilities lead, the missions coordinator, and officially the greatest baker in the church. Anyways, yeah, so we are going to do communion a little different this morning. Um, as throughout worship, the, f throughout the, the morning, throughout worship, you are welcome to take communion um, on when you feel the, the leading of the Spirit, so you can come on up, grab your communion and your juice, and take that as you please. Um, so there's no set time and no one to lead us through, but that's just, whenever you feel the leading, come on up, grab your communion. Um, yeah, so why don't we stand? Everyone's welcome to the communion table. Um, why don't we stand and just, you know, Smile at someone. Let's see your prettiest smile this morning. Just smile, say hi. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Good morning. Hello, Gerald. Good morning. All right. This morning during worship, the altar is open. If you want to exper uh, be at the altar, don't let anything hold you back. Um, I just want to read um, Psalm 29. I read this in the prayer room, and I just, I just love it. It's, I've been reading it almost twice a day. So if you just want to post yourself in a place to receive... Um, the word. So Psalm 29, honor the Lord, you heavenly beings. Honor the Lord for his glory and strength. Honor the Lord for the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in all of his splendor, in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty sea. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord splits the mighty cedars. The Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon's mount skip like a calf. He makes Mount Hermon leap like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with bolts of lightning. The voice of the Lord makes the barren wilderness quake. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists mighty oaks and strips the forest bare. In his temple, everyone shouts glory. The Lord rules over the floodwaters. The Lord reigns as king forever. The Lord gives his people strength, and the Lord blesses them with peace. So, Father, this morning, as we enter into your presence um, that's already here, um, Father, we thank you that you give us the, the opportunity to worship you. And Father, we are reminded of those throughout the world that cannot worship you like we are worshiping you, Father. And we're praying for them. We're praying for the underground church this morning. And we just ask that you come in mighty ways with great expectation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, yes, we're thankful that you are here this morning, and we welcome you here, Father, and we use our mouth to praise and exalt your name.
thirsty to just receive more of you. It's so good to be in your presence. We welcome you here, Father. Thank you, Jesus.
just a moment for the Lord. He just took a moment. He said, go back to the last thing that I told you to do and do that. speaking right now and as we were singing this out I was thinking about the altar but the altar in the Old Testament that place where people families would bring their sacrifices to repent of their sin but before a holy God they were come at the altar and I was thinking and praying about that. And I was praying and the Lord asked me, what is it like now? What is the altar like now? After the death of Jesus and the resurrection, the altar has changed forever. But the thing is, it's still about sacrifice but it's a different kind of sacrifice. The altar is now a place where you bring your stuff and you leave it before a holy, perfect, all-sufficient God. But that's still a sacrifice because when you come and you lay your stuff at the altar, you say, you know, I'm not in control anymore. I lay my things at your feet. I can't control them. I recognize that through my own human form, through my humanity, 
I cannot do this alone. That is what changed at the altar. And I just feel the Lord speaking that he wants to touch some people in certain areas this morning. Um, one of them being, I think there's people in this room that are feeling tired. They are just, they're like, I don't know if I can go on any longer. I'm just exhausted all the time. So if that's you, if you're like, I'm feeling tired, I just want to invite you up because I want to pray for you in a little bit. Another thing is, I just feel like the Lord wants to speak to people about anxiety this morning. That there's people carrying anxiety this morning. We are living in one of the most anxious cultures. And he, I think he wants to touch people this morning. There's people, I think, that are dealing with self-harm this morning. Self-harm, if that's you, I feel like the Lord wants to touch you in a, in, in a great way and, and show you that you are not who you think you are, that you are actually beautiful, that you're actually called. I feel like there's people in this room dealing with self-image issues. That the Lord wants to say, you know, you might think you're this way, but this is how I will see you. So if that's you, if you're like, I want to see myself the way the Lord sees me. I want to invite you forward. If you're like, I, I feel like there's a, he, a anointing for healing on physical items. If you need a physical healing this morning, I want to come invite you to come forward like I said this is a sacrifice to come forward when we take a step of obedience and come forward that's when it happens if you are dealing with a rotator cuff issue this morning come forward if you are having issues with your left knee your left knee come forward this morning i just i just feel the lord wants to speak deeply into people so here's what i want to do if you can if you can i know there's some people that can't if you can i just ask you to just kneel with me if you can it's totally fine but there's something there's something about when we humble ourselves before the Lord and we take a minute and we ask for the peace of God to come because it's only with the peace of God where he begins to work. So Father, this morning, this morning I pray for those that are dealing with anxiety, Lord, that I, you break that off in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, there will be no more anxiety in the house of the Lord. And when they leave this, this house, they carry your spirit with you. And where your spirit is, there is freedom. I speak to anxiety this morning. I speak to depression this morning. That there is no place for depression in the house of the Lord. And you are the miraculous healer and there I feel like the Lord's saying there's got to be times even if you become healed that things are going to come sneak back but here's you have the anointing and the power to speak into your own life and you can rebuke any thought that comes I, f I just pray for those who are dealing with self-image issues this morning that they will see that they are called beautiful that they will see that they are created by the king of kings the lord of lords this morning that they are so beautiful that the king of heaven literally stepped out of his throne to die on the cross for them 
I pray for those who need a physical healing this morning. That this, 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 the, the Spirit of God is moving and where the Spirit moves, healing happens. So I speak to any physical issues this morning that they will be released in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I speak to self-harm this morning. I speak to those who are, are, are self-harming this morning and say, the Lord loves you. He thinks you're beautiful. He will be your comfort. You just have to lean into Him and seek His face. So we're just going to keep just seeking the face of the Lord this morning. So the altar is still open. And those of you that are in your seats, it's never too late. If you're like, oh, I should have came up. Guess what? The Lord will meet you out there also. So I want to pray for anybody that didn't come up but is struggling in one of those areas. Father, I remove any shame that is in this place this morning. That sh the grace of God covers all shame, covers all sin, covers everything. That you keep your promises and you are called good and you are a holy God. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord.
What do you do when you feel like your life is a mess? What do you do when maybe you wouldn't call your life a mess, but you're like, something's not right? As we were singing this last song, Majesty, 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 the Lord just brought me back to a place I was in November 2021. Um, a place of brokenness, loneliness, to the point where so lonely, so broken, I almost resigned from my job to go work at McDonald's. And I just want to read to you something I wrote in November. It says, pastoral ministry can be a lonely place. This has been my experience the last two months. What can you possibly do when you feel like your life is falling apart? You may be like me and resisting, acting like everything is okay. But until I began to see my loneliness, my hurt, pain, isolation, sadness, as a constant reminder that I needed to stay close to God, it was simply an annoying pain that bugged me daily. My first step towards help was to see my mess as a positive that drew me closer to Jesus daily. I'm reminding, reminded of Jacob and how he was a complete mess with God, he even received a blessing and a new identity. He was such a mess, your name will no longer be Jacob but Israel because you struggled with God and humans and have overcome. In fact, Heller, Helen, Kel, Hel, Helen Keller said, character cannot be developed in ease, easy and quiet. Only through experiences of trial, suffering, can the soul be strengthened, vision, vision cleared, ambition inspired. Romans 15 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I was in such a lonely place and the only, you know, I would, I would come and I would be at the altar and I would feel good until Monday morning. And then what did I have to do again? There wasn't an altar, there wasn't a church, and there wasn't a handsome preacher guy to pull me forward. What did I have to do? I had to learn to do what I was doing here in my quiet time to bring it before God daily. Heidi Baker says you need your oil daily. But what we do on Sundays is an equipping us to carry us through the rest of the week. To teach you how to be quiet with the Lord. That is the goal. So I just want to encourage you if you're like, I keep coming. I keep coming. I keep coming forward each week. And nothing's happening in my life. My first question is, what is your daily routine like? Are you spending time before the Father? Because only Him, only He is sufficient enough to carry you forward. Amen? Oh, I could preach. All right. Anyways, thank you, Heather and the team. You may be seated. Yeah, thank you. Good worship, eh? Praise the Lord. Well, I think me and Tracy should arm wrestle on who gets to preach this this morning. I'm just kidding. Um, 
she, she might win. <laughs> then I'd be embarrassed. Um, all that yoga and stuff. Pilates. Pilates. I don't do yoga. Uh, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Maybe someday. All the way. <laughs> we're getting there. After Africa, I'll we'll be practice. like, woo! Yeah, we'll practice All on right. the plane. <laughs> All right. Anyways, Tracy. <laughs> oh, what an awesome morning so far. It's, um, I feel like my message has already been preached, to be honest with you. Like, we've covered <laughs> so many pieces of what I'm going to speak on this morning. But before I get into my message, I just feel to remind us as a body, um, who, who are we? <laughs> What's our identity? What's our mission? Um, and what we experience in worship and what Colby has referred to um, is we, as a body, um, our mission is to see you equipped to receive and experience God's transformational presence and power. Because we know an encounter with him changes everything. And so as Colby spoke to those pieces this morning, when, we're, when we gather, it's about equipping so you can take those things and apply those things daily into your week. And so that's, that's who we are. That's the journey we're on. And so this morning, I can see this ribbon of what God is speaking through our midst. And it was interesting, Jason, when you, whatever lick you were playing, when Kobe was speaking, when he had the call to the altar, I, it was just kind of this sound like God was walking through the room, the way you were playing. And I could just sense his movements through the room, and it's beautiful how um, voice and instruments, how those are ways that God is speaking, and then when Jocelyn came up in worship with the pink flags, just up here for a short period of time, pink is like new beginnings and rebirth of what God is doing as we remember how faithful he is and how faithful he will continue to be. And so we have these promises that we can hang on to, that he's constantly speaking. So worship isn't just music. It isn't just us singing. He's speaking. There's a message going forth, and it all ties together in what he wants to say to us this morning. And so there's just a few things I want to touch on to connect a few dots for us before I get into my message. And the first one is um, connect groups. So Colby said, you know, what's your daily routine like? Well, what's your weekly routine like? Um, we are created to be relational, just like our God is relational. We're, we're image bearers. So being together in relationship is life-giving. It helps us grow, and it helps us move towards maturity when we actually come alongside people, Um, because sometimes those are meant to encourage us, and sometimes they're grace growers meant to sharpen, to take off some sharp edges when we come in together relationally. So we do have, we have connect groups that happen every week which are small groups of people who gather together either weekly or some groups are bi-weekly. And the focus is on spiritual formation where we learn to live like Jesus with others. So some of our groups have a theme. So the group gathers around that theme, but they're completely about relationship because you're learning how to be with each other and how to grow in Jesus as you gather together. So I wanted just to highlight a few groups. So if you're not in a group yet, and you're like, yeah, I could use some help walking this out. There are some groups that are just, they're open. All the groups are open, but here's some groups that are just basically drop in if you want to check them out. There's no pressure to stay, but if you want to drop in and check them out. So the first one is Monday nights. It's here. It's the uh, Bible study fun group. They have fun discussing the Bible. They're currently in the book of Daniel. Uh, Seven o'clock here, so come on by, drop in, check out that group. Wednesday nights, we have the Alabaster House that meets here, and they focus on prayer, 7 o'clock here at the church. They're in the um, youth room. Is that correct? Yes. Um, And then every second Friday, there's a games group. So it's a chance to come. Sometimes this is a great place to start if you're like, okay, I just want to, you know, see what this is like, getting together, playing games, and being together, and enjoying one another's company. And that's at Nalan and Darren Stretches on Nod Road in Freetown. There's more information on the website on that. And so if you're not in a group, I'd encourage you to check one of these groups out this winter. And then with that, um, I'm going to ask Jim and Heather to come on up. Kobe, they're going to need your mic. 
Um, another way to, again, connect relationally is by being involved in a, in a team that serves at the church. And so there's a lot of people that come together on a Sunday morning uh, or even through the week to see things happen. And so Jim and Heather are going to share a, a, some needs that are on the AV team um, in terms of how you could get involved on a Sunday. <laughs> Looking at an image and I didn't set the right image before I came up. Okay, you okay. go change. No. That's good. Yes, so um, another way you can connect is through um, our AV and tech team. So it's not one of those things like, oh, I'm going to do a little activity here. Who has a smartphone in the room? Can you raise your smartphones? Anybody that has one? I know there's more people than that. (laughs) If you can use a smartphone, then we can use you in the AV and tech room. Honestly. Because I tell my kids that if you can use a phone, you can use a washer and dryer and a dishwasher, right? (laughs) So the same goes for our AV and tech team. We have an excellent group of people and we have so much fun. Heather, right? We have a lot of fun every Sunday and then Wednesday night sometime. Every second Wednesday we try and meet and rehearse. And worship, honestly, like Tracy said, is not just the music that we're doing up here. It's every way that you serve the Lord, right? It's how you live out your faith. And so there's a scripture that says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord, right? And so those jobs that you think are the lowliest of jobs, I think are the highest in God's kingdom because there's no recognition for them necessarily, but they're still a pertinent part of what we do. And I'll tell you just how valuable it is that if something goes wrong up here on a Sunday morning and you hear that big loud screech, (laughs) everybody looks at the back of the room, right? So the part that they play is so valuable. So if you want, if you think, hey, I'm a little tech savvy, I'd like to learn something. We have a great group of people. Um, Come and see myself or Jim and we'll, we'll direct you to which, I mean, there's lights, there's everything, right? You can. Yeah, we do, uh, we do lights, we do sound, we do uh, video, camera back there. We have everything that goes out to the world happens, happens out there. We have a presenter. If you were to come in and if you, were want to, if you were wanting to be interested, don't let what everything looks like scare you because you walk back there and, and it looks like you walked onto the bridge of the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> First time I walked back there, I was like, okay, so this is interesting. But it's not as intimidating as... As, as, as that actually looks. And just, um, I'm going to do a test here. Samuel, having fun? Excellent. Samuel's first time on the, on the camera. He showed up today. I showed him how to use it. We walk you through everything. He's actually loving it. And we say it's, if you have any tech, technological lean in your brain, I say it's more artistic because, I mean, lights make the show. Sound makes the, the show. Camera being able to actually... Recognize great image. I mean, Samuel's up there. Hey, like, I'm seeing a great image over here. What do you think of this one? Great lock on that. I'm going to use it. Wow, look over here. This is so, so we're dancing all over the place. And we have a really good team. Um, I would also say that you need to be able to work as a team because if you come in saying, hey, you know, like, I've done this for 25 years in my previous church and this is how we're going to do it, that might not work here because everyone contributes. Everyone is a team. We want to encourage each other. We don't want to discourage each other. And, um, we do have Timbits on a Sunday mornings, which I found that I, that I have to hide them because people come walking through and go, ooh, Timbits. And then, <laughs> but it's a really good team way. It's a good way to express your creativity. It's, it's, a, it's a good way to see how things go behind the scenes. We won't, if you sign up, it won't be you are now punished to the back room forever. Everyone goes on a rotation. We want to try to use you. We also don't want to try to use you as often as you say because you also don't want to burn people out. But it's a really, really good way to actually just step up and step out and just see how things work and be artistic and be creative and just be part of a really good, good functioning team. Amen to that. I would also say the two of these, the worship team and the AV, we all are a team and we all work together. So if we find out there's artistic and musical talents happening back there, it's good segues into here. Okay? That's it.
Um, oh, hello. Um, speaking of, of worship um, and gathering corporately, I just want to invite you as well next Sunday evening at Faith Work Center, churches from... There we go. Um, all right. So, yes, next Sunday evening, 6 p.m. at Faith Works. Um, our, the churches are coming together to, to pray and to worship and to seek to hear what the Lord is saying for PEI. So, I would just encourage you, it's just another place to learn how the Father speaks and how He works through His people because it's the church is the church. <laughs> it's not just one church, it's us gathering together because the church is us. Uh, and so we carry that as we go forward. So I encourage you to join um, the churches across the island at FaithWorks this next Sunday. So mark your calendars. The last thing, um, as I reflect back over 2022, um, I've been doing that the last couple of weeks, Sarah, um, I'm so encouraged with the amount of love that I see being shared through generosity. Um, and I really, I really do thank you for being a generous people. You really, really are. You recognize who your source is and how to live generously like our Father is generous with us. And so I've, I've, I hear all kinds of things. And so I've heard a number of stories where individuals and small groups of you got together to bless others with either gifts or with money or with food. You just did it on your own. And that is the kingdom. That is the church. Um, Silently loving out of a generous heart. The giving to the Christmas blessing to help out three families this Christmas who are in need. The gifts for seniors who were so blessed. We saw such great pictures of just the blessing that that was. Um, the shoe boxes we send out through Samaritan's Purse. Uh, blessed children around the world. And the food for Chesley and his family after his work accident, leaving him unable to walk right now, but he's moving towards walking. I have a quick update on Chesley. I was talking with Leslie. Chesley continues to be in good spirits. Um, he's very thankful and he's very positive because he will walk again. Uh, he's been cleared to do some partial weight bearing with a walker, which is very painful and it's very tough. Um, but he has good pain tolerance, which is helpful. Uh, and so Leslie, her biggest prayer request right now is prayer for strength for herself. Uh, to keep everything going without burning out. She works, uh, she's, she's back to work, um, not full-time, but back to work. Um, she's, of course, balancing Chesley, the kids, and the home. Um, and so these are kinds of experiences that we go through change us. They really do. And so she's, you know, seeing that the little things do matter. And so she shared that God is so good, uh, and she knows that God is carrying them through all of this. And so I just want to encourage you as a church to continue to pray for them. And your end of your giving. So we had, of course, end of your giving at the last week um, of the year. And we saw just over $52,000 in one week <laughs> come in, which allowed us to meet our giving goals for 2022. So I thank you. I thank the Father for your generosity. Um, and just like, wow, wow. So thank you. You're amazing. And I pray that you will even know more deeply, more deeply just how precious you are to the Father. It's your love and your obedience to follow his promptings in, in, in you that are a beautiful gift of worship. Your obedience to him is worship to him. And so I pray that as you pour out, that you will be poured into uh, with more revelation of who he is and how much you can trust him, because you can trust him. So speaking of generosity, and Colby, you can come on up. Uh, we'd like to honor someone this morning that has given us a really special gift this January. Uh, in so many ways, he is a gift. So Gordon Waugh, who's out in the foyer, <laughs> Gordon Waugh, if you want to make your way up, um, you will find Gordon silently caring for people behind the scenes, caring for a church facility behind the scenes, and Gordon offered to help us with some painting this January earlier 
last year, and I'm not sure if he knew what he was getting himself into. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Um, he has come faithfully since the first week of January, uh, faithfully day in and day out to get things prepared with Don McDonald, our maintenance lead in Colby. Uh, he helped guide the painting days that we had, and Gordon, you did it with so much care and consideration both for the people and for the work. Gordon lives in such a way that says, you are so much more than you do. That's how Gordon lives his life. People are more than what they can do. He cares for the, per- the person first so that they can do the work with excellence because they feel cared for, they feel seen. And so when we feel cared for, we want to do our best work, right? When we feel like someone sees us, we want to take care of the things that we're doing with the tools and with the building. So I want to highlight So Gordon, please don't be embarrassed, but I want to highlight (laughs) that this is the kind of people we are becoming. We care for each other in such a way as to encourage each other to do our best when we put our hands to our work. And I say we're becoming because we have lots to learn on how to be this kind of people. We live in a world that values people for what they do, for what they know, and who they know, and not always for who they are as image bearers. So we are all unlearning and relearning. And what helps us with this is when we experience it from others around us. When we see it in action, it helps us understand, okay, that's who we are as a people of the kingdom. So every Sunday, Gordon is here early, and he always checks in with me and other volunteers in the building. And it's always, first, it's always, how are you doing? Not what are you doing or what are you up to, how are you doing? Now that's a message um, and a, a, an important thing for us to, to, to glean from. And this is how we want to be with each other. How are you doing? So Gordon, thank you for living your life in a way that sends the gospel message out just with what you do. And thank you for loving so well. So we want to honor you and appreciate you today. Um, and we have a gift certificate for you to take out your wife because you've been away from her for a few weeks. <laughs> and so we want you to be able to take Ruth Ann out and enjoy being with her. So we want to bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I want to say, um, me and Gordon are a lot, yeah, let's stand. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> Gordon and Gordon and I got to work very close together <laughs> this last few weeks. But um, just for me, it was watching Gordon with the YWAM team. Mm-hmm. Like um, when they were here, they weren't. He wasn't worried about getting the job done. Like I think we we won't tell the boss, but we played like nine square for an hour and a half with the team <laughs> um, during work hours. Um, But yeah, but I'm just reminded of uh, the impact you had with Ronnie, and he still is messaging me, asking about you. Ronnie, who who was a part of the YOM team, um, told me that he lost his grandfather recently, and that Gordon reminded him of his grandfather, so they've made a nice connection. Um, Yeah, so yeah, we thank thank you, Gordon, and um, yeah. Bless you. Mm. Mm. And that's, that's family. That's what we do. We walk in honor and love with one another. All right. So I'm going to dig into my message. Like I said, it's already been preached this morning, but I'm hoping to tie a few dots together for you. Um, Our goal as a teaching team has been since January 1 to give you a recap and a summary of last year's teaching from our different perspectives, but God had other ideas, so that's cool. Um, So I was reflecting on my notes from the first Sunday of the year, and I was like, Lord, you've kind of like chosen to do something else. Do you want me to share anything about last year? Give us a summary. And so I just, I have last year's teaching down to one sentence. One sentence. Last year has been an invitation to stop living for ourselves and to begin living a more submitted life to Jesus. 
That has been the invitation throughout the year. And as I reviewed the themes, it all points to stop living for ourselves, begin living a more submitted life to Jesus. And so in November of this year, that invitation started to become much more clear. So for our 25th anniversary, who remembers our 25th anniversary? We had a party. <laughs> we had some potluck. Um, we were given, we were shared, the message was shared with us um, as we go forward, and the message was, it is time. And I don't know if you remember, but Alan Ramjatton, um, who's journeyed with our church and felt God's call to start a work in Lenox Island, um, he, he and Matilda were here. And if you, if you weren't here that day and you haven't heard the message, I'll encourage you to do so. But he gave, he gave us this watch, stopped at 11 o'clock. I still have this watch in my office. And it was a prophetic act signifying a few things. And so first, when you have double numbers, so 1-1, one, one, um, it's significant to pay attention. In Scripture, when things are repeated, it's like pay attention. And so 1, biblically, from the Hebrew um, alphabet, means unity. It means unification. So if you recall, Alan and Matilda also brought a word that it was our 25th anniversary, so that's two fives. So double the grace, because five means grace. So the prophetic word, the kingdom word we were given, is that it's time to step into the things that God is calling you into. And if you are afraid, do it afraid. But it's time to step into these things. And they spoke of unity and how important it is that we honor one another. They basically spoke out Titus 3. If I look back at that message, it's like Titus 3 that Josh read last week as he was recapping the morning for us. And so basically that passage is saying, come before Jesus, and there's things that Colby already talked about today. Deal with the issues in your heart that don't bring unity. Come before him. Because unity, which is putting Jesus at the center, not our agenda, not our desires, but his alone. And he says in John 17, 21, that all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. Unity is so important because we are a family. We are a family. So we place ourselves in Jesus at the center as Jesus places himself in the Father. And what was last year's teaching, right? Stop living for ourselves and begin living a life more submitted to Jesus. And then on January 8th, the message I felt the Lord laid on my heart was will you choose to build a wall around your heart and do life on your own terms, blocking out the very one that you need, or will you invite Jesus, the Father, who loves you deeply, to come and help you take down those walls? He just wants to gaze at you because he loves you. And so will you come before him in repentance, turning from your own ways? Forgive, receive forgiveness, mercy, grace, and love. And if you recall, I talked about unblocking those fuel lines and related that to unblocking our hearts so that we have what we need to do the things of growing God's kingdom here. So I just want to take a look at that Titus passage again through this lens of turning from living for ourselves and living a more submitted life to Jesus. So living with Jesus at the center of our focus, choosing to be unified with our desires, sorry, choosing to be unified with his desires and heartbeat, inviting him to renovate our hearts. And if you think about David in the Psalms, King David says, when it comes to the heart, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. We prayed about anxiety today. He knows your anxieties. And see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Choosing to no longer live by my preferences, but submitting to Jesus' work within us, his way of doing life, not our own. So if you remember last week, when Josh was talking about Titus, Titus says at the very beginning, Titus 3, verse 1, if you've got your Bibles, pull them out, pull out your devices, your phones, go to Titus 3, verse 1. So Titus says, remind them, we easily forget these things. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. 
We need to be reminded of these things. So that's part of why we come together. That's part of why we do small groups. We need to be reminded. And it's easy instead to go our own way because we're surrounded by it. So our own way, for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. And because some of these words we don't use today, I want to read from the message as well to drive this home. So it wasn't so long ago that we ourselves were stupid and stubborn. That's foolishness. (laughs) Amen. Easy marks for sin, disobedient and deceived. Ordered every way by our glands, serving various lusts and pleasures. Going around with a chip on our shoulder, living in malice and envy. Hating, hated, sorry, and hating back. Hateful and hating one another. When I was reading this too, it said, like it says hated and hating back. And I was like, there's self-hatred that then produces hatred. And so we have, to, we have to deal with those things and let the Father do that. So if you continue on in Titus, the next thing that Titus says, it says, but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared, towards men appeared, who is that? Who is the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man who appeared? Jesus. Amen. So not by works of righteousness, which we have done. We did, we did not cause this to happen. But according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration, which is the new birth, regeneration, and renewing, which is the maturing, of the, uh, in the maturing in our hearts, so of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly. So he did not hold back. He doesn't, he's not stingy. He's ready for you through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by grace, we would become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Amen. Amen. That is the word of the Lord. So you know what this tells us. So if we look at those scriptures together, we are constantly under renovation. Constantly. It's because Paul says, remind them who they are. Remind them what I, of what I'm calling them to. We're constantly under renovation. So we were created in the very image of God, right? In Genesis, it tells us that. In our infant state, we sinned. We wanted to become like God. We wanted to go ahead of God and do things our way. Sound familiar? Yes. So God's image in us is broken. It's distorted. It's no, it no longer reflects his glory. So the Bible gives us the the love story of God redeeming us back to his original design. And it takes God through his son, Jesus, coming to earth, taking on everything. He took on everything that it means to be human. He unites that with the divine so that it can be restored. So for us to be restored, we need to give God permission. We need to give him permission to do that ongoing renovation work in us. So the invitation is there. Through Jesus, that invitation is always before us. The choice is ours. Will you say yes? And the yes is, guys, it's every day. It is not just once. It is every day. So will you say yes to have the divine unite with you in new birth, that is the washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Spirit that Titus speaks of, we are, are redeemed so God can reside in us. He no longer resides in the temple that was part of Israel, the very center. He resided in the temple. Now he resides in us to restore the image of God in us. So God has done this for us. We don't do it. So I want, that, let's think of it this way. We can't explain how a tiny seed that basically is hard and dead We can't explain how when you put it in the ground, it's surrounded by the earth, with sun and with water, it flourishes, it grows. A tiny seed can grow into an absolutely huge tree. So in the spiritual life, we are like that seed. We are dead in our old ways. And when we say yes to Jesus, we're put into, if you think of Jesus as soil, we're put into the soil of Jesus. We unite with him. For the nutrients we need to grow and to become who he said we are. We need 
Jesus, the soil. So it's a new birth because it's not from our flesh, not a physical birth or physical regeneration, but it's from the Holy Spirit. It is a spiritual rebirth. Our growth is no longer what we do because we can't do it. We've talked about this. We, in our nature, cannot save ourselves. But what the Spirit does in us saves us. So we submit to the work of the gardener, who is the Father, in this new spirit, this new soil, which is Jesus, right? And he provides his love, his kindness, his grace, his mercy to help us grow into all that he designed us to be. And it's a free gift that we have to say yes to every day. So to take this further, I just want to give you another picture to help with understanding. So I want you to imagine, imagine with me for a moment. So we've got the seed in the soil. Now we have also said you're an image bearer. So we are an image bearer. It's where the image is broken. It's distorted. It's dirty. It's packed with the grime of years of doing things our own way. The image of God in us cannot be seen clearly. So imagine for a moment the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican in Rome, built in 1481. So there's the Vatican in Rome. Um, In the 80s, there was a conservation restoration of the frescoes of the Sistine Chapel. It was one of the most significant conservation and restorations of the 20th century, okay? So in the 80s, the Vatican famously began an extensive restoration of the chapel, clearing away centuries, centuries of dirt and grime for Michelangelo's famed frescoes. Okay, the chapel is just, it's a big painting. So the beautiful paintings were breaking down. The images were covered with years and years of human dust and earthly grime. How does one restore these images? How does one restore these images? Well, as I read and learned very carefully with a soft brush and mild solvents. So just imagine with me, close your eyes if you need to, someone laying on their back on scaffolding that goes right to the top of the chapel, laying on their back with a soft brush, carefully moving it back and forth, back and forth, applying a solvent back and forth. Painstaking work, back and forth, so that the image can be restored and can be seen for what it was intended to look like. So painstaking work over 10 years for this chapel to be restored. And some might look at it and say, you need a bigger brush. (laughs) You need something bigger, like you got to scrub. Like, stronger solvents, come on, move this process along. Come on, we want to be able to enjoy those paintings. But if an aggressive process is pursued... There is the risk of long-term damage. Parts of the image will even be lost. Extreme care was required to restore these images. So the reality is, the image in you of the Father is the same. It's covered in dirt and grime. And the Father knows just how fragile, how fragile each of us is. He knows how much you can handle. He knows your capacity for the work that he needs to do in you. Even our resistance is part of his work. He is faithful to complete his work. And what does it tell us in Philippians? Paul says, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you, imagine the brush, he will complete it by the day of Christ Jesus. He doesn't move quickly or harshly with a rougher brush to get through the grime faster. And if you think about the nature of the enemy, of our enemy Satan, what does he do? He rushes around seeking to whom he may devour. He goes quickly, he goes fast. The nature of our God is gently and slowly because he knows, he knows how you're created and he knows how fragile you are. So he moves carefully and gently, lovingly, so that you are not damaged further, so that you can be fully restored. And so in the word, it is time went out, that invitation to stop living for ourselves and begin living a life more submitted to him, what is Jesus saying, it is time for you, for me, to submit to the renovation in your heart? Don't wait 
any longer. The work of the renovation of your heart will not, it will not stop on this side of heaven. There is no arriving at some grand pinnacle and it's ah, all done. That is not going to happen on this earth. God is present and he's working right now. Just like the Sistine Chapel. They didn't just like rub their hands, you know, and say like, we're done. The chapel looks fabulous. Um, and there's nothing else to do. Nope. Once they completed the daily, now once they completed the work, they now have to do daily conservation to keep the restored images protected. So there's the team that does this. So they do this every day. They have to go through because the chapel is enjoyed by thousands of visitors every day. So get this, the delicate artworks are carefully monitored to make sure they're not threatened by contaminants brought in by hordes of visitors, so more than a thousand can crowd in this chapel at a time, who inadvertently track in dirt, dust, they leave behind traces of hair and skin. It's fascinating, the work that they do, and it's, it's definitely worth checking out if you want to go home and Google it. So the delicate art uh, deals with ongoing contaminants on this earth, and so do we. We need daily work. So we know from scripture that there is still more to be filled in the restoration of creation. Of creation. Jesus will come. He will come again. Think about the prophecy from Revelation. Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Note, he says, I am making all things new. He didn't say, it's done, it's over, finito. He said, I am making. You are in process. We are all in process. And you are not forgotten. You are not forgotten. He's there with the brush. So as I, as I reflect on this, I think, wow, you know what? We really need to give each other a whole lot more grace. We really do, because we are all in process. We're going to have good days and we're going to have bad days. God is at work in each heart in this room. He's at work in each heart in this city. He's at work in each heart in this province, in this nation, and in the world. I'm reminded of that as, I, as we're on the cusp of going to Africa. He's at work in each heart. And so, Father, give us eyes to see. Give us eyes to see and have the grace that you pour out on your children. And then I, so Heather this morning, Heather, you spoke the, ver, the word, the verse from Second Peter, and I was reminded of Peter, because Jesus did a lot of work in him, and it continued, you can see that through scripture, but he says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. And then he says, the Lord is not slow, as we might think he's slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. We think he's slow, but he's not slow, because he knows. He knows you. He created you, and he knows the work he needs to do in your heart. So God desires that every one of us would allow ourselves to be planted in the life-giving soil of Jesus and come to life. Paul said this very thing to the Ephesian church. He said, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. Before we come to Christ, we are dead like that seed in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in, pre in trespasses, made us alive together by Christ, by grace, you have been saved. So God give us grace for one another in the whole process. So since it's his work in us, the greater our level of submission to him in us, Lord, not my way, not my will, not my desire, but your way, your will, your desires, the more we submit, we talked about submission this morning, the more we submit, the more we experience his presence his restoration, his joy. And it's kind of like this, and I'm going to come coming towards the end here. It's more like this. The more I am submitted, the more I know his presence is there to show me what he is seeing in me. So 
Example, in the middle of an argument with my husband, he is right there. He's in the middle of all those moments that you're not so proud of, where the old nature shows itself. And his loving presence in the middle of the mess reminds me about not justifying my actions, proving that I'm right, or getting my own way. And the questions start to rise in my heart. How will you show love right now? Ooh, <laughs> in the middle of that. Um, so whatever you find yourself tangled in, he is present with you in that tangle. And he loves you in the middle of it. In the middle of those things that are pulling you away from him, he's there. And he says, I love you. And now I also find that when I make a choice that's not the best choice, I'm more attuned to this kind of sadness or grief, and I feel his presence saying, I have something better. I have something better. And I'll be like, oh, I messed up again. And he's there, and he's like, yeah. (laughs) But what will we do differently next time? Because he's with us in it. So he will help us through the next step. So a greater peace, a greater joy, gentleness, more capacity to love your enemies, submitting to authority, what we read in Titus, starts with submission to him. And maybe for some, it's even a greater submission that he's calling you into in this year. Making mistakes, big ones, in his presence and knowing that he lovingly is renewing your heart. He is lovingly removing that grime and that dirt and all the things that distort his image in you so that more and more you reflect the very, his very nature in his image. So it is time to start submitting to the process. It's time to rest in the fact that his timing is not our timing. One day to him is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. So I just want to show you um, this picture. So Judy, I didn't tell you I was doing this today, (laughs) but it's important. It's important. So um, this picture was painted during our worship um, and uh, creative arts conference, and it says, it is time. You can see in the muted colors, but I was staring at this the other day, and you can see the colors are very muted and they're very beige kind of like the early morning hours before the sun bursts through, right? That's kind of that, those amber colors just before the sun bursts through. And you can see there are brighter tones underneath, but they are yet to burst forth. The sun is about to burst through the horizon, but it's not quite there. So it's this, it is time, is this invitation to come forth to step into his light. It's time to allow God to show you the true colors of who he is and why you can grow in your trust in him. Submission, giving yourself to his ways. So it's time for the Father's affection. We're in a time of the Father's affection. He's pouring down his affection on us, his people. And we are being invited to position our hearts to receive. And he is saying, you can trust me. You can trust me. Because he says, behold, I am making all things new. You are under renovation. It'll continue to be, you'll continue to be under, and under renovation. But he says, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. I am making things new. So these are the very words of God, and they will not return to him void. They, don't, they will not return to him void. He's making things new. And they will achieve the purpose for which he sent them. And with these words, we can have joy. And we can say, more, Lord, more, Lord. So the reality of the spiritual life, the reality of the spiritual life is that it's less about preparedness, and it's more about openness. Now, I'm someone who likes to have things figured out. I like to be prepared. I like surprises to be reduced. (laughs) But the more I find I'm open to him, the more I understand his nature and how he works, the more at peace I am and the less I feel surprised. Because it's like, okay, I recognize, yes, God, that's you. (laughs) You're at work. Nothing surprises you, so I'm going to rest in you. So building our faith and our trust in him is choosing to submit to God every day, not our ways. 
and putting ourselves in intentional spaces where we have time to experience his love, like Colby talked about. Time to experience his love and his kindness towards us because we are in process. So picture him on his back, gently brushing and restoring you, taking his time. And fight, fight that urge, fight nasty (laughs) against anything that would pull you away and submit to the regeneration and the renewal that is happening in you. Be kind to yourself, be kind to one another, because this can get messy. And he is right in the middle of it. He loves a mess because he loves to clean it up. <laughs> so there's no, there's no rush. He will show you what is next. And it could be as simple as repentance of something that is getting in the way of your relationship with him. Is there something you need to turn from? It's receiving his forgiveness. It's extending forgiveness. It's finding the more, it's finding his mercy and his grace in your day. And I'm finding the more submitted I choose to live, the more these are, these are daily practices. Repentance, forgiveness, mercy, grace. These are daily practices. And these are the solvents. These are the solvents on the brush to restore the image. Or maybe there is something that he's prompting you to do, but you're afraid. I'll encourage you, do it. Do it afraid. Whatever it is, it is time. And so I bless you to seek intimacy with God every day. You will find encouragement and challenge uh, in the very short book of Jude. I'll encourage you. The book of Jude, it's one chapter. (laughs) But there is encouragement in there to seek the Lord. And it's very encouraging. So I'm going to get us all to stand. Stand together. And this is um, the scripture verse from the end of Jude, which I just love. Um, And I'd love for us to read it together as best we can. Okay? So now to him who's able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. So with that, um, we want to provide an opportunity to um, pray over Colby and I and Andrew and Shirley this morning as we're going to be heading to Uganda. So I'm going to get Shirley to come on up. I think there's a mic. I know we're running a little bit over, but that's okay. The Lord is in the midst of it. So I want to say if you need to go, you are released to go. Um, And so um, I think in many ways, Colby and I are stepping into this message today. Um, It is time for us to step into this place of heading to Uganda um, and experiencing the work that is happening there. We've been working with this um, community um, in Gulu, so World Embrace with Kathy and Reynold Maines. And we know that the Lord's heartbeat is for us to step into and check out this mission and see where we go with them. Do we go forward? What does it look like? And so uh, we just pray for wisdom in that. I will. Yes, thank you. Um, And so the cool thing is, as we were heading there, um, Andrew and Shirley are headed to South Africa to visit their son, Joel. Um, And when you are in the country of Africa, it's much easier to to maneuver and fly. And so um, Andrew had actually been talking about going to World Embrace even before this. And so it just worked out that uh, halfway through, partway through their trip, they leave on the 25th, and they're going to join us on the 31st the 30th uh, and spend the 30th until the 6th when we or the 7th when we fly out and so we're excited that that's a part of it because Andrew was a part of stepping into the work in Africa here and so this is an extension of that and so getting his wisdom and perspective is going to be very valuable as we take this journey of discernment and so we're excited about that not very electronically changed Um, I'd like to invite all the prayer ministry team to come forward, please. All of you. Anybody who signed up, is on our list, please come forward and surround them. Um, I also invite the elders. I can't see anything with those lights, but hi, Ron. (laughs) So just surround them, cover them. Uh, If you have a word for them, I I ask that you would release it to them of encouragement. Uh, Many people in this congregation have been to Africa, been challenged by Africa. 
and I certainly was. I've been there five times. And uh, yes, so we're going to just start to pray. And if you feel you have a word, uh, lay your hands on them, anoint them, and uh, lift them up, not only today, but all the time. So I encourage the congregation, too, to do that, to reach out your hands and bless them as well. You're part of this. It's just the stage isn't big enough for everybody to be here. So, Father, we just thank you for this uh, willingness of our leaders to step forward. Um, and I feel, God, that you have uh, called them for such a time as this to do this, to help us grow here at Summerside Community as a church and uh, as to reach out to the lost and to the, the people that need to be reached out to. So, Father, I just ask that you would release a blessing over them today that you would release a covering, that you would hide them under the shadow of your wing as they go. And I know, Father, that they're all going to be so blessed. They will come home different. And Lord, that differentness will be our gift that they will give us. And the excitement of being in Africa and to be out on the edge of things. Uh, not in the comfort of a beautiful facility like this, but they'll be out in the bush bush and they'll be ministering to the darkness in people and calling them forth. And so if you have a word for them that you'd like to share, just put your hand up and I'll give you the mic. So in 2002, as we were on our way, just coming into Africa, it was just breaking day. And you could just see the sunrise beginning to light the continent. And I knew that my life would never be the same. I just knew it. Africa is going to change you. I will declare it. Uh, Tracy Shirley, it's the first time I believe for the both of you, you will be changed. I declare it, and you will be changed. You'll never be the same again. I, for one, am incredibly excited for you because what you're going to experience is God in action. Father, I ask that you meet these ones exactly. Meet them exactly where they're at. Exactly where they're at. Exactly where they're at, Lord. God, that you would touch them. You would change them. God, I pray that you would give them the opportunity to step into the book of Acts to step into the Gospels in such a very real way. There would be an openness, and I pray, God, that they would step in to the miracle healing power of you, Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit that raised you, Jesus, from the dead is in each of these, and I pray that it would just explode into fruition. I declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. I've been on two short-term mission trips to Africa, and I'm the type of person that's always looking for the next thing to do and have my mind there instead of in the present moment. But I remember the exact time in Africa and the feeling of uh, letting all that go, letting the next thing go. And it's a laid-back country because of the heat, for one thing. And uh, the other is that's the way they live there. You know, they have these siestas. They're all bundled up on the side of the road, hugging each other. And, and uh, you know, they're really touchy-feely because that's who they are, you know. So I'm praying that you'll have that experience, too, as you feel that laid-back feeling in this country that you're laying back in the arms of the Lord, doing his will through Christ our Lord. Um, I had a picture while we were worshiping, and it really lined up what Kobe said about letting go of control. And this is sort of like an oxymoron, but the only safe place in the kingdom is to be over your head, in the river of life, can't touch ground, the water's swirling, and you're completely in the hands of the living water, which is Jesus, of course. So I just want to bless you with that childlike faith 
that every twist and turn in the river, because one of the things I learned about Africa is nothing goes the way you think it's going to go. They're going to tell you to show up at 11 and you're going to leave at 3. Like everything about Africa is off kilter according to our standards. So as you go off kilter in Africa and you're out of your control, the waters are swirling and you have absolutely no way of controlling which way this river is going to take you and what's going to happen. I just, I just pray for all of you that the childlike faith of being in the Father's arms, because he's got his arms wrapped around you even if you're running down, even if you're over your head down the river. So I just bless you with that. And, and even as you might want to get frustrated because things are so wonky, that there would be so much joy in the journey that being out of control will be so much fun. So I just pray joy and great childlike enjoyment and faith. And, and I just pray that it will be so much fun, even though it's hard, if that makes sense. God so bless you with that in Jesus' name. And Father, we speak divine health. No sickness. Lord, you tell us we can drink poison. We can step on snakes. No problem because of you. And so we just declare supernatural intervention. Total health. Uh, I've never been to Africa. But I'm just hearing the word forerunner. And I really sense that the Lord is, there's going to be treasures. There's going to be surprises while you're there. And I believe that you too, three of you, are forerunners for this generation. And I believe that, you know, to go, you're going to share and you're going to impart. But they're, you're going to be imparted as well. So you will bring back treasures and you will bring back surprises for this generation in this place and that we will never be the same. And so um, I just want to bless you in that. And also, I just, I had a picture of the Dead Sea. And, and I, I know that um, it's been prayed to just, to just relax and lay back. And I know that I've been, I've been in the Dead Sea. And when you relax, you just, you just fall back. And God's there to catch you. So I just, uh, de I just declare this morning, Lord, for boldness and, Father, for compassion and, Father, for trust in you. You, you will be coming. You will trust God like you've never had be, done before. But it is going to be an exciting time. It's going to be a joy. And so when you come back, it will spread through this place and the body of Christ and gen, this generation. And we will catch it. We will catch it. And we will go forth. And as... As uh, Isaiah 61, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, for he has anointed you to speak, to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent you out to heal the brokenhearted and set captives free. So I bless you with that word. I thank you, God. And we're excited in the name of Jesus. Amen. coming from a mother's heart. Oh. When I went to Africa, I left here with some medical issues. And I went for the children. And those children laid hands on me, and I came back, and there was no cancer cells there. So the word I have for you today is... Love on the children, because those are the ones that are going to impact you the most. It's funny. Um, when I heard about this trip, I was part of me for a while. I was just thinking, it's too bad Andrew and Shirley couldn't come along with them. It would be kind of nice. And then I... Today, I was focused on what Tracy was talking about, the seeds and the trees. And I felt like 
Andrew, you had, in your first trips there, you planted seeds with not knowing what it was going to look like 25 years. And now Colby and Tracy are gathering the fruit of those trees that were planted 25 years ago or what, however long ago. And now even more, those seeds have fruit, or those trees, have, fruit have seeds in them. And there are going to be people coming 25 years down the road that are going to be able to gather the fruit of those seeds. And then I just thank you, Lord, that what was started has grown into fruit, and that fruit will grow new seed to, to propel future generations who come into this country. And that those works will be works upon works upon works. And the ceilings here are your guys' floor, but your ceiling will be the floors of those who are coming after you. And so I pray and I thank you, Lord, for what you've started, what you're continuing, and what you will do. We, we, we speak it now in Jesus' name. We declare it to be so. Amen. Um, I feel that open your hands because the Lord wants to put something in your hands. It's very significant. There are going to be some tools that you will need going there. And I'm not talking about physical tools, spiritual tools that you may not have experienced yet, but you're going to be surprised by the Spirit. And Lord, I just, I just ask that you would fill those hands with your blessings as they go, that whatever they touch, whatever they see, whatever they go by, that your spirit would move very strongly in them. We thank you, Lord, that you have given them these gifts. These gifts are not for them. It's for the people that they will meet in Africa. And I thank you, Lord, that you are going to do mighty things. You're going to open their eyes. You're going to change Colby's eyes. He's going to have a whole new look, a whole new vision for himself and for his, the people here. And so what you go with, you're going to come back with much more. You go to give, but you're coming back with much more. And we just want to bless you in the name of Jesus and send you with our blessings because what you're going to receive, we're going to receive. Amen. Um, <clears throat> when when Colby asked us to come up for, to come forward, and um, when I was heading back to my seat, I f I stopped and I was praying for Andrew, and um, then confirmation came during Tracy's teach, and then again when Steve spoke. Um, but I felt like they were micro greens around you, Pastor Andrew. And um, I was like, well, what does that mean? Because I thought maybe it had something to do with color because you had mentioned color in the prayer room. But as, as it kind of went on, I, I just kept asking for clarification and I, more confirmation. Um, but now w what I feel like wasn't said is that each microgreen has the most amount of micronutrients in it and enough to sustain the entire plant and that every tiny little microgreen is important and um, every little tiny act of service you don't know what that's going to evolve into and what it's going to grow into so never think that any small act of surface of service is in, is not significant because it's huge and god sees the final product we don't you know we don't always see the final product and sometimes we don't even know the seed that we plant you know like you might recognize the seed and say well that's a bean but when it's mixed with a bunch of other seeds and you plant it into the ground you don't know what it's going to be until it goes beyond that microgreen so you and then the fruit of it is there but um also i just had this quick memory of whenever i was in africa what was the his last name was hart young man 
Will Hart was preaching, and everyone was in this little hut. It was a, it was kind of like an open hut, and I felt like the, it hadn't rained in days and days, and they were praying for rain. <clears throat> and I went out of the hut into, it almost just looked like a little, um, it just looked like concrete pad that was over on one side, and I just laid down on the ground, and they were in there praying for healing and praying for rain, and I just laid down on the ground, and I just started to pray for rain, but not only rain, but a healing rain, and I felt little trickles of water going down my face and down my legs, and I just gave everything that I had with me to the Lord at that moment, and it was just so incredibly healing, so and I feel part of the reason why the healing happened was because the busyness that we have in the Western world covers, you know, it just, it surrounds us. It's like arrows hitting us of things we have to do. And when I went to Africa, all that agenda was laid aside. And there was m so much more of Jesus there and less of things. And so I, I just pray that you guys feel that and that the the joy that is in Africa that is always there that we don't feel as often here that you guys are just, that you guys feel that immediately um, when you get off the plane I know Lisa Goody said when she got off the plane on one of her trips it smells like trash and Jesus <laughs> and so I I pray that as soon as you guys get off that you just have that feeling like Jesus is right there in Jesus name and so, you guys, we send you off with our love, our prayers. We're not going to stop praying for you the whole time. Right, gang? Yes. Right. We're going to cover you. Um, I just want to say um, that uh, I just want to honor uh, Barry Copeland. I, I know he was here. And um, Don and Elizabeth can tell that our first ministry trips were in 2006 to Mozambique and we're still supporting a number of kids there and our education fund is still supporting there and so um, this this really is the DNA of this church family to be going out um, not just simply to our country but also to the world and um, I just want to say to Tracy this morning the way you uh, honored uh, Gordon that, that you have brought a culture of honor into this house um, that far exceeds anything that I know that I brought. Um, and I, I just was delighting. I just wanna bless the, the, the leadership that you've brought to this church. Um, and that like we were very conscious of, of not wanting to that this is Colby and, and Tracy are going out as ambassadors and leaders for our church and that Shirley and I are no longer in leadership. And so we, we wrote them first, asked their permission, and they said, of course, we'd love to have you come. And so I just want to, I just love the way you honor. And, um, and this morning, Gordon, full kudos to, to who he is as one of our first elders. And so I just want to thank all of you, um, those who are, are new and, and those who have just moved here, that there's a place for everybody. And that's one of the things that I, I sent to Tracy last week and when we watched online that, that everybody, um, I just love the way she encourages everybody to participate. And, you know, almost seeing half the congregation standing up here um, and seeing half of you down there. We all get to participate in various ways. So um, just God, God bless you all. And um, may, may God just truly impart in all of you um, what he's gonna, I know he's gonna impart in us. So I just like to pray and then we'll, we'll go. Lord Jesus, thanks so much for everybody here. Um, Father, thanks for the the faithfulness of uh, Freddie and Caroline and Dale and Iris and, and um, Mert and Sylvia and so many who
who have just labored um, from, from the beginning, and, and for the new people who are, are moving here from various parts of Canada and, and abroad, we're, we're just so grateful, Jesus. Our hearts are just full of gratitude for what you're doing in our midst right now. And, and uh, yeah, there's been all kinds of change, but it's, we see your hand on it, and we see your purposes on it. And, um, and this morning, Lord, we, we want to continue to pray for Lucene as uh, she recovers from the loss of Al. And, and we're a family, Lord, that just takes care of each other. And so we, we honor what you're doing in our midst right now as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, um, the one who is a father to the fatherless, uh, who is a husband uh, to those who have lost their spouses, um, uh, a brother, an older brother, to those of us who need a good older brother. And, and we love you, Lord. And we bless you. And we thank you for everything that's happened today, Jesus, and for what you're going to continue to do in the years ahead. God bless, in Jesus' name. And everybody said...